Welcome once again to another DF Retro Let's Play. I'm joined by my good friend Audie Surly. Audie. Hey John. And today we are going 16-bit with a little Rocket Knight Adventures. One of the finest games crafted for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive by Konami. Yeah, I'm actually not that familiar with this game, but I am more familiar with Sparkster on the Super Nintendo. That's right, one of the game's sequels. So... To kick things off, if you haven't noticed from this introduction, uh, we are playing the Japanese version, which starts slightly differently than the North American and European versions, and in fact has some tweaks made to the difficulty, namely it's not as brutal, which was a common theme back then right? with Konami games in the West. So straight away, oh, look this at is the... a beautiful game. Yeah, so look at the colors in this game. Sort of a light, almost pastel look, which is atypical for the system with lots of depth in the in the scrolling. So you have that independent castle there, burning in the background, the clouds passing in front of it, all those individual mountains with different hues of purple scrolling at different intervals, mm. probably using some sort of scanline trick to do this, uh, and just huge, colorful, and well-animated sprites. Now, there's, there's a few things that really make this game special. Obviously, there's the presentation side, which we'll discuss, but it's the gameplay, the game design itself. This, is, uh, this game is packed with variety in a way that few games are. This is um, almost like, uh, you could say, a boss rush game in a way, but with a lot more variety. I've heard it described as a situation rush <laughs> by some people. I think that's an accurate way to look at it. Right. Basically, it's a series of crafted scenarios. So we did some platforming. Now we're facing off a couple against a couple mechs here. Um, there we go. Yeah, this game is, uh, despite the colorful nature and like the characters, it's giving you a bit of a contra vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Oof, that was a rough start. Actually, I wasn't as always talking and playing at the same time. Can drain you a little bit. Yeah, you get you're getting some uh, health power ups here though. So yeah, we're it's good. All good. We're good. It's all good. Yeah. So yeah, we we're mentioning uh, Contra here. It, it, it gives me a little bit of a Contra vibe. And for good reason, as this was directed by Nobuya Nakazato, hmm. who was the director of Contra Three, and uh, pretty much every Contra. Yeah, after I was gonna that, say every the Contra hardcore too. on uh, the Mega Drive, which right. would release the following year. Also, the music, yeah, amazing so far. Yeah, it was. Um, so there was, I think, three different composers, and one of the most well-known, of course, being Michiru Yamane of uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night fame. Uh, so this was obviously prior to her working in Castlevania. And it doesn't... Um, it, it, it's, it's an interesting score with more of an orchestral vibe to it mm. and a lot of the tracks. But then it's, it's a unique, eclectic soundtrack, I think. There's, like, jazz, there's some... Uh, you know, high energy stuff, some symphonic style tracks. It's full of variety, just like the gameplay. So that was the first boss, right? But yeah, we're yeah. still in stage one. <laughs> and grab this little power up here and immediately you rock it. You get all that nice parallax in the depth. Just look at this, yeah, yeah. They're using the sort of raster effects to create the sense of water below you there where the color changes. You've got three different layers scrolling down there. Well, it's actually a single layer, but you know, uh, and then they're doing plenty of line scrolling all over the screen, but you still have the clouds passing in front of the mountains and mountains passing in front of the distant cloud layer. I also note that the, uh, when you fly close to the sea, you get this sprite of his water jet spray. Oh, there. wow, yeah. So much detail so far in this game. I remember reading that this game was also announced for the Super Famicom, but it was canceled, I believe. That's uh, interesting. We didn't get the spinoff, as we mentioned earlier. And it was what, well, and the spinoff on Super NES really isn't even the same game. No, not at all. Uh, Sparkster's I'm interesting. Looking at this, yeah. The okay. sequel to this game, there was two, both called Sparkster. It's different. On They're both system. different. Yeah, yeah, completely different games. So looking at this, just looking at this right now, because I haven't played much of this game until right now with you. I don't know if the Super Nintendo could pull this off at this speed, this fluidly. I have to wonder. Um, yeah, I mean, in the right hand of the Super... I would say that 
to do this effectively, perhaps, you know, if you use one of the uh, helper chips, hmm. like the SA-1. Oh yeah, the new SA-1 mod, it, maybe. It yeah. certainly seems very feasible in that case. Right. But just a stock Super NES, I don't know, I'd love to see it, because Sparkster itself, the sequel on Super NES, has some pretty severe performance issues and slowdown. It's a good game, though. It's, it's a good, good game, game, but it doesn't run very well. No. Unlike this, which is extremely smooth, as is the sequel. That was a cool heat haze effect, by the way. So here we go. Yeah. And you probably, uh, I should probably explain the rocket I was uh, just about to charge. ask her, yeah. So essentially, you see that meter at the top. When you hold down the A button, it charges. Right. And when it reaches the top and starts flashing and you let go, you will spin in whichever direction. You either fly or spin, depending <laughs> on the direction. If you do yeah. not press a direction, you just do spin this. Spin around. Yeah. Circle. But if you hold a direction like a diagonal, you get this. And those was like arrows on the wall earlier. So oh, it kind yeah. of showed you. So it was teaching you this mechanic and now... You know, you exactly, can just kind of giving you the idea of, okay, well, this is what you should be doing. Right. You get this extra life up there. So, I mean, so this is a Konami game on the Mega Drive, and we should probably talk a little bit about Konami on Mega Drive. That's true. Oh, but first, I love this part. Very cute sound. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so Konami had been partnered with Nintendo for years. Um, they were a staple on the NES. They were... they. They launched under the Super NES era in a big way. Gradius 3 was a launch title. They had stuff like Castlevania 4 and Contra 3 within the first year. Uh, they were big on Nintendo, but you couldn't ignore Sega's success, in the, especially in the US and European markets. And as a result, uh, Konami decided to start creating games for it. And the first two titles in 92, I believe, were Sunset Riders and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Hyperstone Heist. Both quality games, but uh, arguably, they feel a little bit more like B efforts compared to what Konami was trying to produce on the Super NES. Uh, I, I, I like Hyperstone Heist. Yeah, I'd argue in favor of Hyperstone Heist, but that's for another episode. Exactly. So there we go. And Sunset Riders is very different. Sunset though. Riders, it's not really a port at all. It's no, it's a, like its But own it came game. before the Super NES port, so right. it's based on the arcade, but it's its own thing. And by the way, of course, that was stage one. So. How many segments did this stage now have? Because I oh, feel like we've been through like five We started five off stages. in the planes, moving along, fighting enemies. There was the waterfall boss, and then zooming along the waterfront, uh, there was sort of, yeah, there was a the mini boss there, the snake boss. Mm -hmm. Then into the burning castle, which we platformed our way through, and then we just faced off against that boss. So yeah, it's just a collection of all these unique bespoke scenarios crafted for the game. Uh, it really is constantly evolving in a big way. And I love this little cutscene, by the way. So much personality with zero text. And of course, the orchestra. I love this little orchestra. Which was replaced in the American version. Yeah, so... Just a picture of Sparkster holding his sword and different poses. The difficulty is also different between them, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, first, before we continue, another cool little technical... I, this is a very, very common trick on the Genesis slash Mega Drive, uh, using raster effects to give the impression of transparent water. If you look to the left of the image, you'll notice that right at the surface of the water, there's like a two pixel high area, whereas on the right, it's three pixels high, and you can kind of see in the middle where it changes. That's just the result of uh, the, the trick that they're using there. And of course, they conceal it somewhat by using the flickering water sprites along the surface. So the end of the end result, they're really just shifting the color palette below that line on the screen. Right. But it makes it almost look like it's a transparent yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, this uh, is kind of like Super NES would have. Oh, another boss, little mini boss here. Already, this is the the beginning of stage two. I was just about to say that. Like, like, okay, this is the beginning of the stage. Here's, here comes another little boss. Right. And it's just the sheer creativity that I just love about uh, Rocket Knight. It seems like every screen introduces something new. Exactly. Now, John, I think uh, for most people watching this, they will have one question for you when it comes to Rocket Knight. What's that? And that would be, what do you think of that reboot that came out a couple of years ago? Oh, that was yeah. like a 2.5D game. I mean, it's not a terrible game per se, but it's a terrible Rocket Knight game. <laughs> I, or at least I just, I never really liked it that much. Right. Also, when they launched it on the consoles, at least, it's a 30 frames per second side-scroller 
So it feels sluggish compared to this. Yeah. And the art just doesn't have any of the charm. The soundtrack is dull. I mean, they just, they didn't, they simply couldn't nail what made this game so good. But we saw other attempts last gen to remake classic games like Bionic Commando Rearm that were very successful. That was a great game. That was a grand, right? Yep. So it is possible. Just, you know, it fell short here. There was also that Mickey Mouse Castle Evolution uh, remake a few years ago. That was oh, pretty good, yes. too. That, that was not bad, actually. Yeah. So it could be done. Cool cool trick here, by the way, you noticed. Now we're behind the scenery. Um, and they show you that just because it shows up here in this little boss fight. So Another boss fight. They're introducing so the mechanic, and here, then you get to use it. And you use it in practice. And I love how there's no text boxes or any kind of tutorial on this. It's just explained for gameplay, pure gameplay. So it's just exactly. great game design that works. Exactly. That's, that was one of their specialties. So I think by this point, uh, staffers that had been with Konami, had, some of them had broken off to form a new studio. Oh yeah, Treasure. Treasure. And in many ways, this kind of feels like the type of game that Treasure would go on to create. The Dynamite Heady is similar to this yeah. in a sense. I mean, there definitely was some sort of competition between them, friendly or not, I don't know, but definitely Konami and Treasure pushed each other. It and, certainly uh, seems that way. Benefited us, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah, it's now back into the caves here. So a completely different section, a little swimming action. Yeah. Dodging these spiky balls. How do you feel about water levels in general? Oh, they're all right. Yeah. I, I've never disliked them. They get a bad reputation. Oh, they definitely I actually, do. I, I like water levels. Usually. <laughs> Bubsy doesn't like water, though. It's fun. So, you know, thinking of Bubsy, <laughs> this this was... I always think of Bubsy. I mean, this this is a game that was part of the mascot wars. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, in, he's a... He's See, a super cool rodent. You He's feel an like awesome. you feel like this was Konami's kind of attempt at Absolutely. making their own mascot. This, this is exactly what this is. This, he showed up in other games. Yeah, I was famously, gonna, I think Snatcher. I was gonna say that Snatcher is probably more well known for just his cameos in other games. So yeah. you mentioned Snatcher. He's in like that uh, the club. Yeah, yeah, the bar the scene. Club. He's one. Another one I remember that's kind of a more obscure one is in GQ Power Pro Wrestling 96, oh, yeah. Max Voltage on the Super Famicom. There's all these characters that are based around famous Konami characters. Uh, you have the Contra guys uh, there as well, but Sparkster is one of them. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's it's interesting. Sparkster lived on more as a, a relic of Konami than a, a playable character. Yeah, for sure. It's, you know, it's of of the mascots from that era, I do feel like he was one of the strong... He's a very cute character, and his design is what ultimately defines the character. Or at least his functionality. He's, you know, with the armor and jetpack, mm -hmm. that, that is what the character is about. It's a very cute and very uh, charismatic character, yeah. Absolutely. I'm looking at this now, the minecart. Uh, they, uh, I think this was like contractually obligated to be in uh, platformers oh, yeah. after 92. Uh, but yeah, so I'm noticing here that like you seem to be locked in. That's most right. Of the time. During during most of these segments, you're just locked into place, mm -hmm. which is useful. But when it starts to flash, uh, you'll get a, a moment where um, you can f move freely. And that's when you can transition to other minecarts. Man, I love the detail. Of just when you defeat these enemies, they lose their armor and just fly oh, off the screen with that expression. Oh, uh, wow. Chickens. Oh, it's the cuckoos from uh, Zelda, huh? Exactly. Another and one of them. Touch. Man, one you can of them see it fla you. <laughs> flashing there. So there we go. Jump onto the next one. And uh, now it is boss time. Does that chicken actually turn into a mechanic here? No, he's just falling around. Looks exactly. Like. Yeah. That's a cool uh, detail still, though. That's a cool detail. Yeah, this the, the boss is especially giving me like this weird Contra vibe here. Oh yeah, it's like fantasy Contra. Yeah, if yeah. You will. Cause uh, yeah, they they have this. It's it's neat. The art direction this is stellar. I think. Oh yeah, just the color usage in this game for a Mega Drive game blows me away. Cause Mega Drive generally have very gritty kind of dark colors. Well, unless you know Sonic. Unless, Sonic pulled it sure, off. Sure, but plenty of colorful games in the system. But this has a different. Uh, sort of vibe, as you say. Yeah, yeah. This doesn't feel like what I would... I mean, 
the Mega Drive is very varied, but for the most part, I think of arcade ports and whatnot. And this doesn't feel like a standard Mega Drive game. You're right. Okay, that's that's what makes it so great, though. Wow, I, I also love these, uh, the way they animate this boss with all the sprites. Yeah, I agree. It's pure class. And this yeah. was very much the stuff Treasure and Konami was doing at this time. These sort of bosses with all these layered yeah, sprites. Yeah, the, the segmented and, uh, sprites. Segmented sprites, yeah. Yeah. They also tried to do that in Ernest Evans. Well... It didn't work out that well. It's an interesting idea, <laughs> sort of creating a marionette puppet sort of character, but it, yeah doesn't really work. Yeah, check out when we do that episode, never. Ernest Evans. Yeah. More of an LV into a fan. Man, that, yeah, that is a great game. Back to Rocket Knight Adventures, though. Okay. Boss is complete. defeated. And yeah. That is you're level, doing, level you're two. You're really good at this game, huh? I've played a lot of this game over the years. I'm a big fan, obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this here. That's right. So, for those wondering, I am playing and capturing on uh, the Analog Mega SG. So, which is just perfect for videos like this. It's a nice portable system. And there's the orchestra Works again. great. Can you actually affect the speed? Because I'm noticing the sprites sometimes speed up on that. Oh, that has screen. to do with the tune being played. Oh, okay. So. okay. Well, oh, okay, okay so. here we go. This is a, a, tech, a defining technical feature. So I, I've seen this before in Bloodlines, but I'm guessing this game came out a little bit before Bloodlines, yes, right? Yes, Castlevania Bloodlines. That shipped in 1994, and the second stage was known for the reflective water. Yeah, that's exactly In, in the this. case of Rocket Knight, however, this is a gameplay mechanic. <laughs> First of all, if you touch that, it's instant death. But what's more interesting, actually... Uh-oh. Oh! Oh, oh wow. Look at that. I can't believe it. That is pro. Made. But you can see here, I can't see the platforms above. So, so you, you have to use you, the reflection. Correct. Oh, wow. So, you this know, is blowing it's, my mind. It's a, <laughs> they're just sort of mirroring the screen, of course, but it's a neat trick. Wow. It really looks effective, I think. I huh. love it. Also notice how that, uh, that top layer seems to be a, sec a separate layer because it sort of moves on its own there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is great. So I guess this is the uh, Rocket Knight Adventure effect and not the Castlevania Bloodlines effect then. Exactly. This uh, water, yeah, because most people would re reference this as a Bloodlines thing, I think. Yeah, that's true. Okay, almost through this section. Just can't get, okay, here we, we go. go. And once again, we have some water to swim through with deadly fish and spikes everywhere. Hmm. On paper, this sounds annoying, but Controls are very responsive. It's a, it's a fun little section. So we mentioned Sparks around Super Famicom or Super Nintendo rather earlier, but uh, what about uh, Rocket Knight Adventure 2 technically on Mega Drive? Sparkster? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great game as well, for sure. Uh, I don't, it kind of has a negative reputation and because, oh, it's a step down from this, but I still think it's a solid game. It plays very well, it's just, it doesn't feel as creative as this game. This game is packed full of ideas. Sparkster is a little bit more traditional, I'd say. It's a little bit more the level to level progression. Though there are still some cool set pieces. But this is all about set pieces, but not the modern style of set piece where it's almost non-interactive or you're still, it's always making use of your controls. You're always in full control. It's just that the environment is always changing around you, so you have to be able to, to deal and cope with this. So here we go, a different type of boss, a little underwater action. Oof. Yeah, I remember uh, Sparkster's design being very different in the uh, Super Nintendo game. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the same on the sequel, where he's, he's a, he looks a little, he has a little more tude, hmm. if you will. Here he's a little bit more friendly. Yeah, he's very game. friendly in this he's, game. He's a I kind of I prefer this. I yeah, prefer I this Sparks here. I'm a big fan. So here we go again. Duck gif. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Gosh, the screen's shaking during explosions. Love that. So here we go. Swim into here. And yes, the cave again, but this time we have a cool heat haze effect. Yeah, wow. Updating at the full frame rate. This even. looks like outside your window right now, actually. It does feel that way. It's still very hot here when we're having a marathon session of awesome playthroughs. <laughs> again, this cool mech. Neat design. 
Yeah, this also is... Eh, animation here is kind of contrast for me. Oh yeah, the sort of mechanical yeah, movement yeah. of that. I can see that. Especially, uh, yeah. It's almost like that, that Birdwalker boss in uh, Contra 3, the fourth stage. Right. There we go. And Good what do we have here? Oh, yes, this boss. I love it. He's like, ooh. The lava fish. The lava fish. Uh-oh. Oh. That's a bad sign. I'm don't, sure draw, don't drop into the strawberry sauce. Air beers uh. also. Okay, I dropped that ball. Let's do this again. So, uh, wow. That's pretty, yeah. so here we go. So the thing about this boss is he always drops healing items if you're uh, slick enough to get them. And then this guy pops out. Uh oh, here he comes again. Far away, yeah. So he'll eat the scenery a bit. Wow, wow, wow. Well, well, this is where you have to hope for the healing items. Get some bananas, some Donkey Kong bananas. There's exactly. one there. Oh, you got some. Oh, and there we, there go. we go. Good going. Oof. Good game. I have to wonder the strategy of jumping out of the fish's mouth like that. Oh, yeah. But that's, uh, that's stage two. This is stage two. Yeah, that was stage two. It feels like it's stage eight in terms of just <laughs> yeah, how much we've say. seen. But yeah, I think that's actually just... Is that stage two? No, wait. That's stage three. Oh, the okay. Stage two was the train boss. I'd still say this feels much further into the game than the stage it four does, and three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The airship battle. And this is something that also shows up in Sparkster. Uh, on both consoles, I, I think. It's a fun, that's a fun idea. Oh yeah, first we start off with a little Pong, after he's fooled. Now you said Pong, you mean like table tennis? Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> sort of. It's like with bombs. Like a dodgeball Pong, You just have yeah. to time your hits right, to nail him. And this, so this level's fun because just for this stage, this little pig guy in the hat becomes your nemesis. And he'll be with us right up through the very end of the stage at different points. The kind captain of, of the way. ship, I guess. Yeah, they defined a cool theme. So here we go. Ooh. Oh, wow, okay. So Harry got like the flying battery thing from exactly. Sonic. Huh? Exactly. So you have to dodge barrels. Oh yeah, you see every time you take a hit, you go flying backwards yeah, yeah. like that. Sounds in this game are just brilliant. There's that pig again. Okay, so don't overshoot it here. And Pull then down, whoop. jump off. Wow. Jump onto here. Yeah. So this is. These guys are a preview of something that's to come. Again, and of course, if you want to get that one up, you yeah. drop off. It. Oh. I forget to hold the D-pad up. <laughs> I didn't forget, but I failed to pull it off. We get another chance here, though, I guess, huh? There it is. Oh. So. Here we go. Damn. Yeah, there you go. We have to use the same maneuver here, although with this fight, it's actually a little bit better to wait. He's going to breathe fire. This also gives me quite a bit of a Contra oh, yeah. feeling. Oh, yeah. I love uh, to do this. It was stage two of uh, Contra three ish type stage thing. Stage three, actually. Oh, stage yeah, three, you're right, because the over at stage two. Yeah. So All if right. I was timing it better, there we go. There you go. We got him. Okay. Oh wow. You're giving me a heart attack, John. All right. Oh, there you <laughs> go. good going. Now we're inside here where we're facing tons of you know, these guys with the bazookas. 
Oh, so tricky. Okay. You have to get through these force fields but while also, dealing with these guys. Right. So there we go. Duck. Wait. So I guess uh, this airship is actually uh, powered by... Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, That's the secret. So much character to this game. You really just this is one of those games where if you if you let if you let yourself go for even a second, it just starts falling apart. You have to be on all the time. <laughs> I'm getting there. Oh. All right, so you start from, oh, well, at least you start from the beginning. The collision on these barriers isn't, it's, it's fine, but. So, I was noticing that Sparkster stands up when you attack. So you kind of exactly. have to, you have to time this stuff uh, properly. Exactly. Oh. The early it, it's very, uh, it's a very multitask focused sequence. Right. You have to. Uh... I'm just amazed at how much they're throwing at you each screen. There we go. Take that Doing pretty well on this run. Oh. Wow. That was pretty much as close as you could get without getting hit. That's true. You seem to have it down though. Okay. Through wow. again. Through again. They just keep coming, don't they? They want to take you out. All right, so we got some Donkey Kong bananas. There we go. Whew. That's a bit of a gauntlet. Okay, here we go. There's that same pig again. And yeah, now we're facing so off against wow. his robot friend. This is an impressive uh, looking segment as well. Check out that. Wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah. They're adjusting on like a per scan line basis there. <laughs> Very rapidly too. Very clever. But to get close and hit the core. Konami does love their core. It's not the only Gradius reference we'll see today. Huh. Not that, that this necessarily is, but you'll see. Wow that and when you get hit by that shrapnel there or junk, I guess. It really takes a lot out of you. Okay. Oh, and you got him. There we go. So the trick here is <laughs> wow, just okay. stand in the corner and like while he's flashing, temporarily he can't hurt you. So that's what we're gonna do. And there he goes. And so the boss that has plagued us from the very beginning of the stage is now finished. And that's the end of stage four. A little bit shorter this one, I feel. Yeah, I mean the game itself is not that long, obviously. Oh, it feels like you, but get, you see so you much. See so many things. It's just <laughs> on the short journey. Changing. Just a joy as a result. Looks like there's like an imposter sparkster there. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that's great looking. Yeah, wonderful. And here we go, stage five. It's got a bit of a steampunk vibe, this uh, It really whole... does, yeah. Whoa. Here we go, uh, dodging. That makes me think that Sparkster would work uh, well today, because I think this sort of aesthetic... Uh, still works, I Still agree. works, yeah. Yeah, this is a great looking stage. All those layers of parallax. Really cool atmosphere, thunder and lightning slamming down. Get the cool Rocketeer goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the helmet would it be, but... You know, it just, I, I, I enjoy these scenes as they temporarily turn into more of a 2D shooter. Gotta follow these patterns here. Dodge through all these things. Of course. Oh, they're riding the rockets too. Now this is where the music really picks up, I feel. Yeah. This is a great section. 
feel like we haven't praised the new music enough here, but wow. Uh oh, I just took too many hits. I'm in trouble. I'm not getting through this one. That's why we have lives. Oh, oh wow, you're. Yep, it's out. Now, this is technically the last stage? No. Let's try this again. <sighs> Starting to get frustrated <laughs> as it happens. The temperature is still, it's just brutally hot here. Yeah. Uh, uh, do and not, we have to, we can't use any cooling while recording anything. We, so. <laughs> we have been very uh, strategic with our, so I've been here for a week now with John, and we have had to turn off the AC very strategically while filming, and then turn it on as fast as possible when we're done. And uh, Absolutely. hope we actually survive. <laughs> So it's we been, are. It's been tough. We have been in a hundred plus uh, degrees weather pretty much all week. Absolutely. And uh, wow, yeah, uh, what a week it's been. Yeah. But at least we have this game to keep us going here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lord Heating us up though. Yeah, and you gotta be careful now. Here we go. Here we go. Now we'll take on this guy. And this is, this boss is straight up shooter. I mean, this is pretty much an homage to Gradius. Yeah, I kind of see that, I suppose. Because you look, he's got the shape of the yeah, Gradius boss. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the shape of his uh, it's the ship. classic. It's the classic Gradius boss with the core. He is the core. You got to work your way through the shield, just like Gradius. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. There oh, we go. Doing well, he's John. Down. You now, can do this. Next part. Yeah, now he's truly a great boss. Shoot the core. Yeah. You need more practice. So I love, I love the fact that this kind of hints back at other Konami stuff. Exactly. Like that. Here Just we, look at the street, though. That's All a cool those, effect, yeah. yeah. Are you going for another wall? You are going for another wall. That's how we do it. Oh, now this section is really interesting. It's like a series of mini challenges that usually involve getting through these portals. Hmm. Each okay. one. So here we go. I'm literally racing these guys to the bottom. So this is a little bit like Battletoads when you race that rat. Exactly. <laughs> See, I, so they're just throwing so much go. different things at you. Yeah, it just keeps going. Really good. Okay, so for this we just have to... There All we go. Right. And they're still coming. There they go. Woohoo! <laughs> this part's fairly simple. Plop on the bridge. There they go. Oh, poor guys. <laughs> and, oh yes, this one is always a little bit tricky. This is, uh, oh, this is the elevator. It's, it's the elevator where you get crushed between the floor and the walls. All right. We've been seeing this in quite a few Konami games, so. Yeah, they love this mechanic. It's all right. I'm into it. And one of the problems here is you bounce back a little bit. Oh, wow. okay, so you have to be clever about that, too. Yeah. Wow. One up, though. Oh, one. plus one. Okay. Uh oh. I'm so, dead. Yeah. Thankfully, there's that one up there. So that's the problem. If you make a single error with your jetpack, there, it's it's over. You kind of need to strategically use it. And you were saying this is not the last stage. Um. I did not envy you for having to play through this. So you were saying earlier that, you know, Konami was very much entrenched in Nintendo. Uh, you know, they had done so many great games on the NES and Super Nintendo, but do you feel like their best output was on the Mega Drive during this era? Well, I hesitate to say best, uh, because they really did just, their output was amazing across every platform, but I really do, I have a sweet spot for these Mega Drive Genesis games. I just feel they're like... Just, they're just like oozing with creativity. Yeah, I just feel like now that I've been playing a lot of their uh, Mega Drive games, they're sort of like the peak of each genre of what they're doing, like hardcore. I will say though that as much as I love Castlevania Bloodlines, I mean, I still think Dracula X is pretty much the best traditional Castlevania game mm. on the PC, PC engine. engine yeah. So, Chino Super Rondo. NES received a lot of great games, but I feel like Konami's absolute brightest stars were on other systems like PC Engine and, well, Mega Drive. So, uh, here you have, I'm noticing you have to Push these or slash these buttons. In yeah, order to this make is this an thing, interesting yeah. mechanic here. 
Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, see, it's... <laughs> I messed that up. So... Up we go, and then... Now these things, um, they're hypnotic. If you just stare, when you're so focused on getting through this part, and they're in your peripheral vision, it, it creates this weird effect, I found. You know, everyone's staring at them right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's that one out there. I'm not entirely certain how to get that. Huh. Today is not the day to find out, though. No. Look at this. This flickering. Because I'm so focused on what I'm doing. Okay, the commentary is quiet. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's we were just both focused there. Aha, here we go. The boss battle. This is oh. fantastic. So we gotta escape this uh, mecha pig. Correct. Wow. Okay. So one up there, there's a one up, but yeah, it's not worth the uh, delay or the detour. I suppose. <laughs> okay. So now you have your own. Exactly. <laughs> this is um, basically how the sequel begins right. with this fight. So now you're just thrown into a completely different mechanic. Yeah. I feel like I should become your Don King here. and but I can't really figure out his uh, pattern here. I'm not sure there is a pattern. Maybe not. I'm not sure what, what logic drive, uh, drives his movements. Oh, a dual hit. Oof. It's very tense. We are both sitting as close to the screen as we can right it's now. Just like, it's like a real boxing match here. <laughs> he seems to be retreating a lot more. Is this an AI thing or do you think it's just coincidental? Ah, oh, you got one more? Uh... Again, I'm not entirely clear how this, this part is implemented. It sort of goes between... Yeah, some I mean, he's... It's an interesting behavior to watch. <laughs> I can take one more hit. Yeah, let's hope he cannot take another. There you go. There you there go. go. We got him. <sighs> Got a term in Sparks your looks there. Get his eyebrows furled, he's just like, Rrr. It's a great character. It is really a shame that Konami didn't do more with him. Oh, I agree. Okay, here we go. This is this is the last stage now coming up. I'm scared. Try of next area. Wow. Alrighty, so So we found him. Where how does this where where do you think we can go from here? Say into space. The only place where capitalism doesn't exist or whatever. <laughs> space! <laughs> I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! And there we go. Magic rocket boost. Does he have a helmet in space? Maybe he doesn't need one because he's an apostle. That doesn't make that, sense. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know. I, okay, here I'm we not go. Sure this, is, works. this is the gauntlet. He's just holding his breath at least. This is very gradius here. Look. Right, yeah, this yeah. Exact wow. pattern. I you love it. Patterns and everything. There they go. Then you'll get that little uh, extra if you beat all of them. Yeah, exactly. The little life fruit. <laughs> oh, was... There you go. So even though you've 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 had some losses here, but I mean you're still uh, you know at nine lives, you're still doing quite well in this game. Yeah, we're we're off to a, it's going okay. I've done better. I've done worse. Well, this part's a little bit chaotic actually. So you just have all these meteorites everywhere. These ones that pop up with rockets. Yeah, well, homing in at you. Oh boy, this is not going so well. So if you can get some uh, apples here, and there you go. Get Not some. enough though, but it's up. Got the laughing robot here. Mm -hmm. Let's 
cool night. Oh wow. This is just... They never let you relax in this game. No, exactly. It's just non-stop action. Oh, you beat him though, so... Okay. <sighs> There's a lot more... Ha oh no. I got some apples. How about them apples? You should get more of them. Oh, look who it is. Oh. Oh wow. Pretty impressive. That is an impressive effect right there. So where do you rank this game on Konami's uh, Mega Drive output? Oh, this is in my top three for sure. I'd have, I'd have to think about this. But it's one of my favorite games on the system in general. It's just such a joy to play through every time. So you prefer a Japanese version, obviously. Um, I mean, I, I love them both, honestly, but the American version is more difficult, but it's not, it's not quite like Contra the Hardcore, where it's... Uh, impossibly difficult. Mm -hmm. I can still finish that one. It just takes a little bit more perseverance. So basically the American version has that rental market fix, I guess, exactly. where they just increase the difficulty kind of unnaturally. Yep. Oh, okay, that was cheap. Wow. That was really cheap. I have to do the whole stage again. Well, and let's try to get some more apples per, uh, you know, when that row of apples comes. Just yep. go from top to bottom, I guess. Exactly. Or... Okay, this part always gives me issues. It's uh, focus time here. Quiet time, as they say on GDQ. Quiet, that's right, focus time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we got through focus time. All right, so now there's the row of apples that's going to come up, I think. You only need... No, it's because oh, it's after I, I didn't get the right... Oh, okay. I made a mistake. Well, you're pretty good on health so far, so if we get through this guy... Wow, you are... Sir, you are amazing. There we go, he's down. These games are rather exhilarating, I must admit. Yeah. Oh, shoot. See, if you hit the colored looking robots, it spawns the apples. If you get the normal green one, it just uh, spawns enemies. Got the Kamehameha exactly. gun here. Okay, let's get through this again. Some slowdown at this stage. Yeah. Wow, you beat him very quickly this time. Yeah, if you just like lay your attack into him hard. Oh, oh. and you got some apples. Okay, so no apples. All right, so... You got a secret bonus point. Who knows what that's from. <laughs> okay. Now it's time for this guy. The var type here. Oh, shoot. So this is quite a boss here. I'm doing poor. But that's okay. When you lose at this fight, you restart from this section. This section? Okay. Thankfully. It has mercy on you. So in what way does the American version uh, change difficulty? I, it's been a while since I, they're very, very similar actually. Mm -hmm. I think it has to do with how much damage you take. Okay. So I think. So I don't feel like the enemy patterns are really any different, or much different. And I think the more difficult settings exist in the Japanese version as well. Um, Alright, so we start over here. Okay, that's fine. I didn't have full health anyway. Now we do. Let's do this proper. This is one of those cases though where if you collide with the boss, uh, it deals a ton of damage. Right. So it's not something you want to do. You want to stay clear of Not it. that you usually would ever want to do that, but you really want to stay clear of this guy. 
Alright, doing like dual hits on that guy now. Very good. Bottom first. Alrighty, we got that part. Oh, doing well. Okay. Spawn in there. Oh, there we go. Just got these top guns. Oof. Yeah, and he loves to ram with the screen. I gotta shoot the, the core once again. Wow. Yes. Okay, on to the next phase. Yeah. I almost, I think the first time I got here, I remember I was surprised when the game kept going after this. <laughs> You're like, really? It's gonna keep going? This starts to feel like a last boss, but oh no. It certainly did not. And look at this, it's that whole ship we've attacked, we've taken up every path of it, and then it's still not over. Oh, there is wow. this now. <laughs> okay. What's the secret to this? Um, It's quiet time right now, trying to figure out the uh, weak point for this guy. Oh, that's it. I just feel comfortable swinging my blade. Just in case the... All over the place. The thing happens. Ooh. Oh, no, really? Oh, no! <laughs> Struggling. No! Come on. Oh. So where is the uh, weak point? It's that little... A red ball. Oh, okay. He flings around between his arms. Very good art. Okay, so you gotta shoot. Oh, there you go, and you beat him. <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> yeah. There's so much you have to do there. Oh, that was the boss. So that this. One, so there is more than six stages. I was wrong. Look at this. Try next area. I yeah, wouldn't have it any other way. Let's keep going. Gotta say, you picked the perfect game to be playing. And uh, what's the temperature right now? It's like uh, 36. It is warm. 36 Celsius. Yes. Precisely. Oh, yes. Now is the time. Wow. Sixty-eight thousand hard and fire. Okay, what's the what's the trick here? Oh yeah, I think I have to charge into him. Oh, dang it! Okay, this is just not going well. At least we will start from here, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what it is. Wow. Okay, let's try that again. So, how many forms does he have? Do you remember? I don't. And this is not the last boss. <laughs> I should say. Not even close. It's just like the prelude to the final boss. <laughs> there we go, just hanging over here. Okay. Wow, he, he does a ton of damage on him right there. There you go. I don't Got some Donkey Kong bananas go. again, and... Got the bananas. We are still rolling. Look at, okay, look at this effect here. Are they using shadow and highlight, or what are they... I really don't know what they're doing here, but that, that spotlight effect is really good. Got some prototypes here. So, yeah, this is definitely the final stage. And it feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah. I even so this is the first time you've ever seen like this far into this game. Oh, right? absolutely! I've only seen like the first stage uh, via uh, people like you showing in clips sure. and whatnot. But you can probably see now why I'm a big fan. Oh, absolutely! This will be one of my next pickups for sure. It's definitely one to get. The original isn't too pricey. It's still very reasonable. Hmm. Sparkster is the one that goes for a lot. Oh wait. Uh... I'm lucky. He'll sometimes he just kind of hangs out here for a while during this first part. Let's 
see if we get lucky. Because once he gets, if he starts to move, it gets annoying. It's a little bit cheap, but that's okay. Because the next part of this battle is the top. So this is, you notice he's been hounding us since the beginning of the game. This knight. Imposter knight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Here we go. Oh, wow. Okay, so you now have to charge into him and then hold on to these. Just the creativity of these boss fights uh, is absolutely amazing. Oh, cause... okay. That's, that's, I don't think that's it, it yet. Next part. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Got him. Okay. Still fine. Just too slow. I'm used to playing this on an actual CRT, I should note, and playing it on a flat screen through the capture gear just adds, all of this adds at least probably 70 milliseconds total to everything, so it doesn't, it is, it's responsive enough to play, but it does, it very much, for these timing critical sections, it's slightly tricky. Quiet time. There you go, another hit. You can talk. It's oh, a, I am. You can be the commentator. At, I'm Pretend at this is like a wrestling commentator. <laughs> oh, you are almost broken in half, sir. Oh, one more hit. I am at the edge of my seat watching John play this game right now, so... And you did it? Did you do it? Is it the end? I don't remember. <laughs> oh. Oh, it is. Oh, it's not the end How'd of the game. How did you die though. there? <laughs> it's not the end of the game. Oh wow, okay. And first of all, check out this line scrolling background. It really gives this impression of a three-dimensional right. This is awesome. Yeah. Background effect. It's so freaking cool. Okay, that's fine. Because uh, okay, you'll, you'll start here. I hope. I had only half a heart. Even now, after that grueling fight, the game is still not done with you. Oh, shoot. Okay, I, I have to kill them each one. Oh, oh wow. See, I shouldn't have left him alive. Alright, well, okay, now we let's know. Let's do that again. Let's do it again. Three lives. I have continued as well, which is nice to know. <laughs> oh, he just exploded out of nowhere, huh? No, if you, um, you hit him twice with a charge attack. Ah, I see. Okay. That's okay. what I was missing. Oh. All right. That was uh, next area. That was trickier than I expected, actually. So oh. here you're seeing some zero gravity, uh, or is it spring? So what is it? It's zero g. All right. So this is a this is an interesting section. Woo. Gotten one up. Get some health refills, which just tells me that we are about to meet some dangers. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> this is absolutely true. It's a nice safe room. And this is the final boss. I need to remember. I can't recall. Oh boy. What's the pattern here? Off to a great start, obviously. Okay, so you have this red little dot on top there. You have uh, to hit. So you use your zero G jump to get way up Whoa, there. Oh, okay. okay. 
so we got that. This one, another helmet. Oh, shoot. I got that incorrect. Okay, so we survived that part. Now the donuts. Oh, yeah, this is this part, okay. So far, so good. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Okay. So his... Oh. <laughs> oh. Oof. We are. This is a pretty intense uh, let's play for me. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm really dropping the ball here. This is not good. Oh, man. I'm guessing no health refills during this fight? No. Of course not. Okay. Alright, so. He will. <laughs> I wish there was a camera on us right now just to see how, like, we're both sitting here destroying John's couch by just clawing into it. For sure. And you just got this couch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next part. All right. Cool effect, though, I will say. Okay. Wait for him to do that. And then I want to go up and... Oh, oh well, you hit him. So... Yeah, this is what I usually do, is kind of wait for this attack to pass the first time, and then launch up into him, like that. So it is a little bit tricky. Seems to have the hang of it, though. Oh, got him. Go. Oh, boy. Oh, this part. All right. Oh. Okay. Oh, again. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm really dropping the ball here. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. All right. Let's do this proper. We, we start at the screen, though. It's first form. Okay. All right. So we're off to the, oh, that's right. He immediately picks up again. Yeah, so this boss is all about patterns, huh? Oh, yeah. Very Contra. Oh yeah, there's this. That will come out. There he is. Okay. This one's just dodging. So he's basically telegraphing or showcasing his attacks for later in the fight. So there's the electricity lines. Then there's these things. That's like showing the different uh, permutations of this. Then he's gonna disappear. And now from here is where you get into, yeah. So he does that, you leap up. And there you go. And what's he gonna do this time? Oh. Did you get the fun? Recording. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Took that one out. Our commentary is uh, turning down, I guess. This is definitely a quiet moment. <laughs> To yeah, I am just super. I'm as focused as you because I'm kind of playing this just <laughs> free, I guess. <laughs> wow. If you made it this far, that's pretty cool. Uh oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Yeah, you should be on the right side there. And wow. Got him. Let's do this try. Go wait for it to pass. In the right corner here. The Linden tactic. Oh, wow, you hit him, even though it was on the other side, huh? Yeah. Okay. A bit of a leniency here on the hitbox. A little bit. That's all good for us. Absolutely. So the last part I really need to uh, concentrate on. There we go. You got him, first strike there. Another one, good. We are... Wow, he is being generous with you right now. Same spot. And I'm hesitant to say this is the end? No. Okay. This is not the end. <laughs> you, know, you know how these things work. Yeah, well, at this point, uh, 
This next Nothing part surprises is actually, me. I always find this quite challenging here. You find this part this challenging. This next part very challenging because when you fail at this part, you have to redo the entire boss. Oh, Lord. Every time. So. They really push you to the limit. <laughs> You'd think it, it does sort of play out like it's the end. Yes, think, I would oh, say this it. is, you know. But no. The pig star is blowing up. But you saw two dots escape from it. That's true. Okay, now this is the tricky part. Let's see what we can do here. Oh boy. And he lives on for a TV screen. Oh. I... So you have no attacks during this segment. That's correct. Just hit the dodge. Look how determined he is, though. Yeah. <sighs> he always throws out two of those, and then he goes to a random side. He, he, it's, I, I, there's no way to know that, at least as far as I can tell. <sighs> See what I mean? Oh wow, so they actually do send you back here. I, I am stunned at what this game is requiring from you. It's not easy. And I always get hit out of the gate because he just he goes from flashing to bouncing so fast. Right. It's really ridiculous. Yeah, I feel like we need a drink or something, like cool down. See, at this point, I would have just put the controller down and said enough. Like, but you, but you. We must not stop. <laughs> can't give up that easily. Although this, this round is going pretty poorly. If this was nice and air conditioned in here, I think it'd be even a lot better. I don't say. <laughs> Dude, I can't even focus on this in this heat. I guess it's the soul of the pig or the AI of the pig that you're really fighting the whole time. Yep, exactly. Alright, let's see if he does this again. Uh... Doing well this round? No. Wait in the corner. Four hits. Opportunity to strike. What? Yeah, sometimes it feels like the strategies you use, every so often it doesn't work. And it always takes me by surprise. <laughs> you always expect it to work. And then when it doesn't, you have to scramble to get back into the groove. Next part though is always the worst. Yeah. Because it's just sometimes you get really lucky. Sometimes you don't. Like that. It's always that one. One more hit on this cycle and you would be done. There yes. we go. So we are back at the escape pod. Whew. Here comes the pain. Um, which uh, SmackDown game was that? Here, Here comes, comes the pain. pain would be... Was that after Shut Your Mouth? E yes, it was the fourth game. Okay. What's the fifth game? It, it was SmackDown. No you roll. Just bring it. Shut your mouth. Here comes the pain. That's right. Woo! <laughs> Okay, here we go again. There goes Sparkster, there goes the TV. So the the pig AI is now chasing us down to the planet. Will this be the victorious moment for me? I hope so. I hope so, John. Let us find out. Oh no, we're off to a bad start. Oh, oh. Well, he didn't hit you as much. 
I think there's, I think it's five cycles on this. I, I counted like five. Okay, good. That Excellent. Excellent. I think this is the winning run, John. This might be I it. I feel it. Come on, baby. We need this. No more dropped inputs, please. <laughs> it was because I... Ah, oh, yes. I think because it's a Bluetooth pad, when I held it too close to my chin, it was interrupted. You know that often happens with Bluetooth devices. Where you... I usually don't eat my Bluetooth devices. No. But... I think we did it. We did it. I think this is it. The winning run. John, I cannot believe what we went through. That was uh, that was a special experience. I feel like him ascending into the atmosphere is as hot as it is in this room right now. Yes, absolutely. But that was a victory. And there we go. The little pod gliding back down to the planet. Wow. So what do you think then? That's your first time seeing the entire uh, run? I think I need to change my pants after I run. <laughs> oh yes, look at that. And of course, the king is so happy. She's back. And he's just gonna pop out of there. And there we go. Look he's rocketing into the sky. So. Like a rocket man. That was a Konami classic there for you. Wow. So that's that a, end just turned into a gauntlet of heat and frustration. A gauntlet of insanity. Now we get this lovely credit sequence we can discuss. So my final thoughts again, I mean, as I've been saying the whole time, I just love the variety on display here. I love Absolutely. the visual design, the music. It's just It just feels perfect to play. Yeah, this seems like one of Konami's the greatest Mega Drive outings. Honestly, sure. it's one of their best 16-bit games, period. They just really nailed everything. And this should give us a little look at some of the folks that made it. So, planning. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I like the cloud effect here. Oh, there you go. Nakazato. Nakazato. And Tat. Okay. The cloud effect, actually, they would use again in uh, Contra the Hardcore uh, during the, the fight on the helicopter. Oh, yeah. Okay. When it's sort of turning, they, they use a very similar effect. I wonder how many people were, how much, how many staff were shared between these two games. Because I, I have a feeling it's a fair amount, maybe. Oh, here we go. Is it the three different composers, or is it four? I guess it's four. Five? Wow, that's a lot. Fine, yeah. That was a fantastic soundtrack, though, I have to say. It really is, yeah. Wow. What a run. I am at loss for words. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Ivasa, I see. EK on here. Hmm. Interesting. So this is probably the first time I've done sort of a a let's pay, play, live play kind of thing where um, I actually finish the game in one run. I am no speedrunner though. I'd love to see, I need to check out some speedruns of this. I love how he's just called Produce, by the way. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if all the games you're gonna run are this uh, intense, wow, I'm in for a great time. Absolutely. Presented by. Konami. I wonder if this is one of those games. Oh, no, there he goes. He's flying off screen. Off to his next adventure, which would be... Congratulations. Try hard Try mode. Try hard mode. How about that? Uh, so let's we did let's it. not. <laughs> so we did it. Here we are at the end. If you made it this far, definitely let me know. Because this, this was a very long video. Um, yeah. But if you did enjoy it, as always, be sure to like and subscribe, ring the notification bell, possibly at the top, possibly at the bottom. It's one of those places. Of course, follow us over on Twitter. And until next time, keep begging Konami to make more games like this.